Okay, so continuing on with operator, let's have a look at um, how we can use the pitch envelope. And a nice thing to try that on is creating um, a kick drum sound. So let's let's have a go of that. Starting from the default state, we're going to use a sine wave to start with for this one. And we're going to try and create just like a, um, a simple kind of uh, deepish kick drum sound. So first thing I want to do, and it doesn't really matter what order you do things in, so just whatever suits you, is I'm going to set my oscillator to fixed. Okay, and this way I can just choose a single pitch and it doesn't matter which note I play. I'm just going to get that one pitch. Okay, so I'm going to choose um, this frequency. It really, it doesn't matter. Basically, you, you might want to tune this to, um, to suit the pitch of the song that you're working on. Okay, so quick tip for drums is to use the trigger mode. Um, we haven't looked at these other loop, looping modes. You can play around with them, but trigger, basically what that does is it just ignores the um, note off message which triggers the release um, stage uh, and it just uses the decay time to create the envelope of the sound. So it's an easy way to just have a simpler envelope that just has attack and decay and that's it. So for transient sounds or, you know, like drum sounds, percussive sounds, um, trigger is a good option. So I'm just going to tap away here and I can just use the decay time to shorten or lengthen the decay. Okay, so really clicky. Okay, so I'm going to shorten that to sort of somewhere in between. And we can play around with that more later on. Now, I want a bit of attack um, in this. There's a couple of ways to do that. Um, as I said, we're going to use the pitch envelope. So let's have a look at that. Pitch envelope is um, has the destination set to the pitch of the oscillators, which is okay, that's what I want. And I'm just going to basically create a pitch envelope that starts very high, so 48 semitones above the destination or the um, actual pitch of the oscillator. So it's gonna come down from 48 semitones to wherever it is, and in this case it's 64.4 hertz. Uh, and then I need to shape the envelope. So let's have a listen to how this sounds. Now, it doesn't do anything until you increase the percentage of the envelope. So I'm going to put it to 100% and press a note. If I slow down the decay, you'll hear this happen over a longer time. Okay, and it's actually not finishing because this decay time is longer than this decay time. So let's try matching them for the time being. Let's put it at two seconds, which is 2000 milliseconds. We'll do the same here. See how that sounds. Okay, so that's not very good. That doesn't sound like a kick drum at the moment. What we want is a very fast decay time for the envelope. So we just want this to get the attack of the kick drum happening. So. So without the pitch envelope, with it. Okay, I'm going to shorten this again a little bit. It's a bit too... Okay, if I want to increase the attack even more, I can muck around with my the phase control of my oscillator. So um, you, you would know about um, zero crossings. So if you do a bad edit in your software, for instance, if you edit at a positive or a negative value and chop it right off, you're going to get a click because it goes from some value to zero instantaneously. I'm going to use that to create a nasty click or a, perhaps a useful click. 25% um, is, is the most out of phase I can get, or 75, but... And let's see how that sounds. So that's added a sharper click there. If I take it off again, let's just go. Yeah, 25. It's got even more of a click. So I'll leave that in there for the time being. 
Um, we can fatten up the this sound a little bit, and re remember you can adjust the pitch. So maybe that's a better pitch for you. It doesn't matter. Whatever suits what you're trying to make. Um, yeah, fattening it up a bit. Sometimes you can use the filter. I'm not going to actually filter out the high frequencies. I mean, you, you could shape the sound more if you wanted. I'm just going to leave that open. But what I'm going to do is just use the drive function of this um, these uh, analog sort of emulation filters. So let's just crank that up a bit. There we go, that's really chunking up now. Turn it down a bit, but it's given it more body. That's really quite chunky now. And now if I want, I can use the filter to go from a really, um, a really, like a softer, I'm gonna make my frequency lower here again. Okay, so you can sort of control the um, the transient or the attack with this, or you can also use your attack in your envelope. So there's a number of ways that you can kind of add or subtract more attack to the sound. The filter, even with it open, just using the drive gives it um, more body. Maybe that's a bit much. I don't that off a bit okay so there's pitch envelope in combination with a few other things to create a kick drum type of sound right let's do um, one more thing with a new operator so I'm just back to another default state here uh, and in this video and um, in this part of the video I want to talk about little bit about the, the routing that's going on here so we would have talked about um, subtractive and um, FM or frequency modulation synthesis in class let's have a quick look at how that works so these are the different ways that the filters um, that the oscillators can be routed this one here is um, in parallel so what that means is each oscillator I'm just gonna turn them all down when you turn it up is going to be sent to the same output. So to make this a bit more obvious, I'm gonna just use, I might even use noise for this one. So at the moment, this oscillator's turned up and it's going to the output of um, the track in Ableton. And then if I increase this one, it's gonna be um, summed to that output as well. So. They're not affecting each other, they're just both going to the same output. Parallel, yeah? Um, and I could change this to something else to demonstrate that again. And same again. So I could pick another oscillator, I'll use noise here. To make it. And I can shape, um, or I can <clears throat> add these oscillators together to create whatever sound I want and the same filter and um, <clears throat> envelopes and things apply to these as before. So that's um, standard parallel processing. So each of these are going to the same output, but they're not affecting each other. Now, if we have a look at the opposite end of the routing options, so we'll go to this vertical one. This is series. So this means that everything comes through oscillator A. The other ones aren't audible by themselves. So let's try that. Turn this one down, turn this one up, and you can't hear anything. So what happens here in FM mode, this is FM mode, is frequency modulation. So what's happening is the, the, um, this, waveform or this oscillator will be modulating the frequency of this oscillator and it creates a completely different result than if we simply sum the outputs together. So this is just like having four different tracks with four different oscillators whereas this is like having one oscillator's um, output controlling 
the frequency of the next oscillator in line. So let's listen to how that sounds. I'm just going to use two sine waves in the beginning. Keep it simple. So here's the first one. These are turned on and not turned up. I'm going to turn this up. Okay, they're the same level, but you're getting a different series of harmonics, and we can look at those with um, an EQ. So I'm going to chuck an EQ on there and expand it out here so you can see the, the additional harmonics that are created when we use FM mode compared to if we just use the serial, uh, not serial, parallel mode. So this just gets louder. Okay, compared to FM, let's turn that off. Totally different thing. As I said before, this oscillator is not audible by itself. Its output is going to control the frequency of this oscillator. Now, interesting things happen if you detune these. Okay, it generates um, a series of overtones that aren't necessarily harmonically related to um, the, the initial pitch of the oscillator. So it can sound very enharmonic or not tuned, essentially. Um, and if you add more and more and use different waveforms and all sorts of things, it can very easily get um, very complex very quickly. So I'm going to add another one in and show you what happens. <laughs> So it doesn't take long to end up with almost just total noise. Let's back that off a bit and just try to create... So because of the enharmonic sort of nature of FM synthesis, it's quite good for creating uh, sort of bell-like sounds. So I'm just going to make this have a bit more release. And I'm going to copy from oscillator A. So you can copy the envelope so they're the same. There we go. So I've bumped this up a couple of octaves and detuned it a bit. So you, I think you can hear there already that we're getting this kind of bell-like sound. Um, or metallic is another way to say it. So that's basically, you know, one of the uses for FM synthesis is that you can... Um, you can use it to make enharmonic sounds, metallic bell-like sounds, or to generate sort of wild and unpredictable harmonics. And then when you use modulation and filters and things, you can come up with some interesting sounds. Let's go down an octave. And yeah, maybe add a bit of this in. So it's just starting to distort there. Copy the oscillator up again, the filter sound. Okay, so very metal um, and becoming less and less usable as a pitched instrument. All right, let's leave that there for operator.